Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I'm actually going to walk you through creating tuples. There are three ways that you can create a tuples with C Sharp. And I want to show you the old way and I also want to show you two different ways that you can do it nowadays that are really going to help you in simplifying your source code. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you by using this new example that I've been working on on the procedural generation series how to use the new ways that tuples can be used with latest version of C-sharp. So in the previous versions uh, of C-sharp, you had to do something like this. So you would go into you know, your class and let's say that I, I wanted to create something and this is a completely, you know, a new, a completely new test. And let's say that you needed to create a tuple and the tuple would contain, you know, maybe a text box and then maybe you also wanted to return a date time and we need to bring it in so i'm going to show you two versions i'm going to show you the old way and also the new way it looks like it is getting getting imported it just hasn't gotten highlighted and we can say all tuples and i want to show you the difference between between these two so when i call this method what i'm going to say is i'm going to so instead of saying all tuples let's go ahead and say get text and date time so that we know what we're calling. And then in here we could say, you know, we want to get the length of time text. We would say return, and then you say tuple, create, and then you will specify each item. So the first one is a text box, and then the next one is a date time. So let's say that I wanted to return the date time now, and basically, basically that works. So what I can do on the color is I can say something like, so let's go ahead and add it in, let me add it in the star meta so that you can see it. So just add it here, there we go. And then what I'll do is I'll call, and let me just move this up so you can see how it works. So, so you're probably familiar with this version. If you're not, this is how you used to have to do it. And this works fine, there's no problems with it, but I'll show you why I don't like it. I don't like how it works in, in the in the old syntax. So let's say that you wanted to you wanted to get these and basically get the return, which is a tuple. So you will say something like tuple and then you say text, and then so these are the, the tuple at item one and tuple at item two. And you can say results. We can say all results. And then you will call this meta. And then the kicker here, which is what I don't like, is say you wanted to access the text box that comes back from that tuple. You will need to do all results. And then you would say you need to say item one. And then we can in fact say item one. And we would need to say, but you don't know what item one or item two is. I mean in this case you do, but it's not very intuitive. Like it doesn't really tell us what data by reading it without actually hovering you really don't know what is returning because this could be somewhere else and you don't really see it so it's really hard to read when it when it comes to you know readability and if i hover over it of course i can see you know this is this is a text is returning a text this is a date time but c sharp added a new way of creating creating tuples which i which i really love and if we wanted to change this and make it more readable, we could do something like this, which is basically the main the main reason to, for making this video, is that I could change this and I could say, you know what, this one here, it's gonna be the text box for the length of time. So I'm gonna say, you know, length of time text, it's gonna be the first one. And then the second one is just gonna be the time, the time now. So I can say date time now. And instead of doing greater than and less than, we would just basically surround it with parentheses. And we would call this something else. We can say this is this is V2, just for this example. And then all we really need to do is return the basically the variables that we want to return. So in this one, I was getting the length of time text. So you probably want to name this something different. So you could say, let's just name this, let's just name it text or length of time text R. 
we can just do something like that and then date time I can say date time now arc that way we don't get confused with what we're returning versus what we're what we're going to have to specify in the parameters so this one basically says this is what I'm going to be returning and this one right here is what we're going to be basically the variables that we need to return so think of this as a type and then this one as the return type so you can see that that is compiling just fine the difference between this one and this one is I can say okay new results and I can still say you know this is going to be a text and this one is going to be a date time because we can see that those are the types but the cool thing about this is I can now say v2 and now I can say new results new results and if I hover over this you still see item one and item two but let me show you the let me show you the power the power of this so if I surround this with text and I can say you know this is the text comma I can just say lowercase and then comma we would say the time now and then this one is going to be equal equal to that now I have full control of what these ones are going to be named so I could say okay this one it's you know the length the length of time so I can say length of time and then this one I can say the time now and then instead of you know instead of doing what I did here I could say length of time and I can say daytime now and I can also replace those replace those so so we, when it comes to readability you can they both do the exact same thing except uh, really we're basically projecting the results into new variables and this syntax is really handy because if you're reading the code it basically just makes more sense when you're when you're reading the code if I return this and I say var and I say results we can say new results and we just return that you'll see new results then the other cool thing about this is it's creating basically a dynamic object behind the scenes you can kind of see that I could I could also say let's go ahead and do this up here and down here and I can say so with this one I projected into basically these two variables with this one I'm basically projecting to a variable but the cool thing about this one is I can say you know it's now type I can see that this is the daytime argument and I know that this one is going to be let's call this one's result instead of our arguments because that's going to be confusing result and then we can just say result arguments is what you put inside of the arguments right here this is what you're returning so and then we can just daytime now result and then length of time result so so you can now see the power of that so we have three versions that we can use now this is the old way where you specify the tuple with the parameters and then you have to use you know if you have three basically three types that you specify as generics you would need to say item one item two item three when you need to get the values out which i don't think is really intuitive and easy to read i like this version a lot better because i'm projecting the results of that into new variables so i know exactly what i'm getting and I like this one as well because I can use that notation to determine what value I want to get back instead of, you know, having to do item one, item two, and, and needing to align them with the, with the generic type. So that's basically all I wanted to show you guys. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting early access to source code and also what I'm doing behind the scenes. So thank you very much for watching, guys.